Let's save some for Kimmel. That was good. Let's welcome tonight's guest. You may recognize him from the cover of White Privilege magazine, Fox and Friends first co-host, Todd Pyro. No, she is not related to Obi-Wan Kenobi, social and political commentator, Amala Epanobi. That was hard. Here tonight from the Hobo Relocation Program, TV writer and producer Rob Long. And her stunt double is a broom. New York Times best-selling author and Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. All right. <laughs> yes, before we get to some news stories, let's do this. Greg's Leftovers. Mmm. It's leftovers where I read the jokes we didn't use this week. And as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, we'll put Joe Mackey on a trampoline near a helicopter. <laughs> ah. Today, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake hit Lebanon, New Jersey, and it was felt throughout New York City. But upon further investigation, turns out Chris Christie just sat down. <laughs> Joy Behar walked onto the View set wearing two different color shoes this week. Producers explained it wasn't her fault. These were simply the shoes that the blacksmith selected. <laughs> Speaking of Joy Behar, <laughs> she says women who look beautiful are not funny, making her the funniest woman to ever live. Unnecessary, but Mayor Pete says people who don't want electric cars are like people who wanted landlines forever. Then he went home and plugged in his car. <laughs> yeah, it deserves a smattering of applause. Yeah. Just a smattering. House Republicans are facing pushback from their own plans to rename a D.C. airport after Trump. Democrats wanted to name it after Bill Clinton, but then it would only service wide bodies. <laughs> In a new hypothetical matchup, Michelle Obama trails Trump by the same percentage as Joe Biden. Meanwhile, here's what's trailing Joe Biden. <laughs> you are disgusting. New York City is planning to build a 40-floor jail to house prisoners. That way, oh, <laughs> you like high-rises. That way, inmates on the top floors not only get excellent views of the city, but Hillary Clinton can't get to them. <laughs> yeah. During a recent episode of Finding Your Roots, legendary actor Michael Douglas learned that he's related to Scarlett Johansson. At first he was shocked, but then saddened when he realized he couldn't bang her. <laughs> a new report warns that self-driving semi-trucks will soon dominate U.S. highways. Now when truckers pee in Snapple bottles, they can do it at home. <laughs> All right, a new study found that half of gym goers will reuse their sweaty workout underwear. <laughs> and some people then sell them on eBay. I knew it. <laughs> I, I got ready for it. I propped myself up. I saw that one coming. An LA surgeon says the size of a man's nose most directly correlates with his penis length. So, congrats, Pinocchio. <laughs> An Italian island overrun by goats is begging people to catch them and take them away. Locals are complaining, but the Taliban says it's a great place to meet hot singles. <laughs> the USDA has confirmed that bird flu has now hit dairy cows, which means the bovines will have to start masking up. <laughs> A new poll finds that New York Congressman Jamal Bowman trails his opponent in his re-election bid by 17 points. 17 points. If only there was a way to sound an alarm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'll take it. I know. A 76-year-old man in Canada claims he got an infection after being bitten by a rat in his toilet bowl. Here's a picture of that rat. <laughs> Despite a full-fledged war, Ukrainians living in the UK are headed home to get better dental treatment. Yes. Getting blown to pieces is still better than seeing a British dentist. <laughs> Didn't even have to write a punchline, really. Right. Scientists claim there's a wild new invisibility shield that makes you disappear in plain sight. Who needs an invisibility shield for that, says one man. <laughs> Finally, Kamala Harris says women's college basketball wasn't allowed to have brackets until 2022. I know. She added that she also looks forward to the day women can vote. <laughs> now to the news. Can Trump's taste in music explain what's going on inside his brain? Political site Axios took a real deep dive into the tunes former President Trump loves to blast on his Mar-a-Lago Spotify playlist. Yes, once again, Axios is doing the stories no one else will touch. Who cares about fentanyl, illegal immigrants, or crime? Did you hear that Orange Godzilla loves show tunes? <laughs> Among his favorites, Suspicious Minds by Elvis, Lionel Richie's Hello, and Ring of Fire by Johnny Cash. You know, he probably identifies with that song after eating so much McDonald's. <laughs> Come on. We've been there. He also enjoys Broadway, including Phantom of the Opera. It's the only instance where he's pro-mask. <laughs> and when Donald's home, don't you dare touch that dial, as Axios reports, he alone controls the volume. Most nights when he's home, he walks downstairs to the ground floor of Mar-a-Lago. Like clockwork, the crowd rises in applause, greeting the guest of honor. Hmm, I get a similar reaction when I take my shirt off in the newsroom. <laughs> That's not Photoshop. Not Photoshop. Axios claims Trump's playlist is the quote, Rosetta Stone, that demystifies how Trump's mind works. So, would you need to do the same thing with Joe Biden, examining his musical choices to see how his mind works? Or could you just watch this on loop? You know what that song reminds me of? <laughs> this is the end, my only friend, the end. I do love the Beatles. <laughs> Todd. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about Trump's musical taste, but I'm assuming on your Spotify list, you got a mix of NWA, Public Enemy, Jay-Z. I got them all. Yes. Who, who are they? Can somebody help? <laughs> no, I actually do like that genre of music because I grew up around that time. But uh, this article makes no sense to me. Breaking news, Trump enjoys the majesty of song? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I missing there? And the article says this is this window into his soul, the fact that he likes music at a certain volume and he likes a bunch of very popular songs. That puts him in line with every human. Mm -hmm. So how is that a look into his soul? To me, the biggest issue that I had with this article is the fact that Trump gets to control both the volume and the playlist. I live in a house with three other people, all women. I was allowed to pick one song at my wedding. No joke. This is not a joke. It was Baby Got Back, played by a band. And then second, I have two kids under three, so basically everything right now is Miss Rachel and Coco Melon. So to me, that is the false part of that story. Men are allowed to control, even if you're Donald Trump. Mm, very interesting. Amala, I was surprised. By the way, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. <laughs> I found 
it's surprising how bland and generic his taste was. All of these things are things you hear right before you're gonna get a colostomy. <laughs> <laughs> I Are meant, you looking at me? <laughs> I, meant to say, that I meant to say colonoscopy, <laughs> not colostomy. Believe it in. I'm the only one there that can hear that can fact check that. I <laughs> what, what did you, you make there, of this? You may as well. I mean, I honestly didn't make anything of it. I, I, who cares what music he's listening to? I don't think in any way it's indicative of what type of person he is. They go on to state he listens to the same songs over and over again as if it's somehow some sort of control maniacal act. I mean, I guess I'm a psychopath. I listen to the same music all the time, and it does happen to be things like NWA and rap and hip hop, and I'm not selling drugs or sipping lean or sleeping with tons of women, so I don't know that music is a reflection of who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I will disagree with goths. Wow, that was quiet. How are you disagreeing with that? <laughs> no, in what, in what sense? People who listen to go goths who listen to depressing music tend to be very depressing. Yeah, um, like depressed. Yeah, depressed is the word, Rob. But it's interesting. He doesn't have any, all of his stuff is upbeat. I'm going to get to you in a minute. Yeah. I need to know what your wife said when you said, you know what would be a great song to play at our wedding? Baby Got Back. <laughs> and she said, why? And you said... No, she knows it is my favorite song. If you okay. listen to that song, it is musically special. I know, I love it. I just feel like <laughs> it's a spectacular song well, that well. brings joy wherever. No, I get it. Though. I get it. Wow. I just, I'm like, listen, I, you're, I mean, uh, your your wife is one fantastic lady. I in more say. ways than one, yeah. she married me. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> um, I am not as interested in his playlist mm -hmm. as I am in because I don't think this says much about him. Just that yeah. he grew up at a certain point, a certain time, and he listened to those those songs, right? Yeah. Um, it's more like his. Dancing, I find mesmerizing. Yes, because it's like, yes, old white guy at the wedding, and he does this thing. He does this, this thing. Yes, and you just think to yourself, like that guy. I know he probably doesn't have that much privacy. You can see Donald Trump today in a hair with a hairbrush or something or a shampoo bottle in the shower, singing Ring of Fire. You know what's interesting? If you look at some of his selections, could Trump been our been our first gay president? <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, since Abe Lincoln. Yes, yeah, since Abe Lincoln. Well, I mean, you know, two hours every day in hair and makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite song, YMCA. Yeah. <laughs> he loves Broadway show tunes. Loves show tunes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's I a mean, stereotype, I'm Rob. I'm sight. disgusted by you <laughs> that you <laughs> indulge these stereotypes. Kat, uh, what did you think of this deep dive, this incredible Pulitzer bait journalism? Yeah, I, I thought they were like, he likes to control the music at his own establishment. I was like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> but for me, honestly, I would never give up the information of my Spotify playlist, actually. Mm -hmm. I feel like... People, if they want to go through your phone, they'll go, always go through messages to try to find the secrets. For me, no. It's First, it's most revealing would be my notes app. Yeah. That's where my secrets. And then what I'm <laughs> listening to, you can find out a lot about what's going on in my life and what I'm thinking about based on what I listened to nine times that day. Yeah. Because I do that. I will squeeze every ounce of dopamine out of a song until I can't listen to it again for several more years. This is what I find so interesting about music is that the song itself doesn't change. Like you, it's a it's it's a pro, it's a product that you can continue. You have to ring it out until, and then all of a sudden it's gone. But the song is the same. Yeah, it creeps the hell out of me. Like I can, there's still some songs I can listen to forever. But generally, there are songs that like do you remember the first time you heard it, the second time you heard it, and it's incredible. And then like it's gone. Could that explain life? That explains dopamine. Yes. <laughs> but then there's always that moment where you're somewhere and someone plays this song that you used to love, you haven't heard in a million years, yeah. and it's like the greatest song ever. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I haven't heard that forever. And I feel like that's probably what uh, YMCA is to, uh, mm -hmm. to President. What song uh, is that for you? Uh, probably, honestly, probably like English Beat, Save It For Later. Oh. Like that. I remember like I was in college, I heard it, and then I didn't hear it again. Yeah. Well, that was a boring answer. Well, don't ask that. <laughs> I don't know about your experience, but in my experience, that is not the case. Because when a girl walks in with an itty-bitty waist and a round thing in your face, we have to go to commercial. Is that your favorite? That is your favorite Legitimately of all the my favorite songs. song. And I'm not making a joke. Wow. I, I love the song. I, 
you can go to other people's weddings and see me when that song comes on. I will like bolt off a chair like I was in an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Topical joke. And, <laughs> you know, I am ready to go. It's it's a weird Todd thing. It's number 37 on the 157 list of weird Todd things. But it's me. I yeah. love Sir Mix-a-Lot. If you're watching, sir, I'd like to meet you. Yeah, I'm sure he's, <laughs> I'm sure he's dying to put that on his list. Hey. Fox and Friends first, Todd Pyro. Maybe he's fan. up at 5 a.m. You don't know. <laughs> he never went to bed. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.